So you have read the title and might be wondering, is it possible? Is it just clickbait? The answer is kinda and yes, and if you are curious how I came to that conclusion, keep watching. I'm Shonko and you are watching East Wind. I became intrigued with the possibilities offered by Melted Down Spruce after watching some videos done by miniature hobbyists. If you are not familiar with the concept, sprue goo is just used Games Workshop sprue parts put into acetone. The acetone kind of dissolves it and it becomes very soft, almost liquid, and you can shape and sculpt with the resulting substance. A great discovery was that this works excellent for filling gaps. It is literally the same material the minis are made from and can be shaped easily. Be careful to use small amounts at a time though, since the acetone can easily melt the minis themselves. The miniature hobbyist made a few molds for sprugo casting, but the results were a bit janky. It was always warped and pockmarked, presumably due to evaporating acetone making bubbles. Now this data is already useful in itself. You can make terrain and filler pieces from this and the deformities can be masked as better damage. But I was curious if this could be legitimately used to create new miniatures, without serious detail loss of course. I began to think how to improve on the process. The first thing I observed was that the molds that were used were all one part molds made from blue stuff. Observing this casting process and also how the sprue goo behaves inside the glass jar, I formed several hypotheses. First, it seems like after the two materials combine, the acetone separates to the top, not unlike oil and water. Maybe I can exploit this later. Second, the warping of the finished models is probably due to the material shrinking. The goo seems to have a larger volume than the dried out plastic itself. With this in mind, I played around in my 3D modeler, the ever faithful SketchUp. I designed a two part mold that has an open top where the acetone will hopefully gather and evaporate, leaving only the plastic. I decided to start out with a 20 sided die and try to cast that first. It is just low detail enough to test the process. And also cheap. I also added a pyramid shaped top. This will be the hole where I intend to pour the sprue go in. My theory is that the bottom of the pyramid will be the only surface exposed to air and the sprue goo will dry out slowly from that side. The material I'm trying to make the mold from is silicone rubber. But first I needed to test if the acetone melts it. I'm using a two-part silicone rubber made by Smooton. It's been proven to work for resin molds and can hold detail very well. I have seen some recasts made with this method and I couldn't tell the difference. Now let me address this first. I do not endorse recasting or buying recast minis. This video is not about that. Recycling sprues is a great idea, making new minis from that is even greater. But if this is proven to work, I will not use this to reproduce anything that I don't own the rights to. This method, again, if found suitable, should be used to reproduce your own designs or a cheaper alternative to 3D printing. As an experiment and as practice for silicone mold making, I mixed up a tiny batch. I just used some custard pots for this, it is a good reuse of some trash that I had laying around. Speaking of the silicone rubber, I must comment the Smooton company because they have an extensive video tutorial library on their website. Some of them have a dated corporate training video vibe, but they get the point across. I put a link to these and to the exact brand of silicone I'm using into the description. The recommended curing time for the mold is 6 hours, so I waited that long then got it out and put it in a glass bottle of acetone. I left it there overnight, anxious to see if there was any damage. Fortunately for me, there was no visible change to the piece of silicone. I actually had some backup plans though, such as testing various 3D printer plastics or even looking at CNC milled metal molds, but fortunately I didn't need to go down this route. The first thing I wanted to do is to create the vaguely pyramid shape wedge for the D20 that I'm gonna be using. I used XPS foam to do this, no need to be really precise there, the point is to have a large surface area for the acetone to evaporate from. I cut out the shape, janky looking as it is, it will probably do the job. I tested some super glue on a piece of foam and it seemed to not react, so I used it to glue the pyramid on. It turns out it does react, it just needs some time to do that. So I glued the damaged wedge back, this time with PVA. Next, it was time to make the box to pour the silicone in. I started with hacking away XPS foam again, but without a hot wire cutter I couldn't really make it straight enough. It was hard to keep anything steady and parallel, and the foam was prone to crumbling and minor tears. Enjoy watching this small clip of me fumbling around a lot. Best method I saw for making was, was to make it from Lego pieces, 
but I didn't have any. So I cut out some cardboard pieces, this time using a carpenter square and a sliding metal ruler. Turns out my cutting mat was warped, so this was a bit hard, but in the end I had some walls. I needed a flat surface to put the box on, so I used this random piece of wood laying around. I grabbed some hot glue to make the box, and yes I messed it up and it is a bit angled. It is mostly aesthetics, but it is still annoying. In the meantime I was thinking about how to half submerge the D20 to the liquid silicone. I created a quick rig from a leftover piece of cardboard, some foam and cello tape. This looks even clutchier than anything I've done so far, which is something, but this is all just prototyping anyway. Next, using my trusty custard pots, I mixed up a larger batch of silicone. I estimated that about one full pot will be enough, I noticed that the blue component was a bit separated. I didn't really think this was a problem, but I made a note of it. Anyway, I mixed up the two parts, stirred them for the recommended 2 to 3 minutes, then began to pour. According to the guides, you should pour from a bit high to the lowest point of the mold, allow the silicone to slowly fill the box in. I did exactly that, well, I thought, and unfortunately I made too much silicone, so that was wasted. I also noticed some bubbles, which I wasn't happy about. Usually at this point a vacuum chamber is used to de the rubber, but of course I didn't have that. Also this was my literal first time doing this, so cut me some slack. Somewhere along the line I also put on some gloves, because no matter how careful you are, this is a messy process. The silicone is supposedly not harmful, but better not take any chances on that. In the end, the mold was filled and there was nothing to do but wait. After the mold drying, I removed the very advanced holding ring, mixed up another batch of silicone and was ready to pour. I remembered some old guide that said that hairspray works as a mold release, so I used that and sprayed the surface liberally. I just used some duct tape and hot glue to fix the second layer of cardboard walls on top, and I poured the second half of the mold. The balls held up nicely. I left it overnight, then it was the time for the grand reveal. It did not turn out the way I wanted it to. The halves were clearly stuck together, the hairspray basically did nothing. I tried to cut it open, but the material was bonded together pretty well, so I just forced it open. Essentially I had a very janky one-piece mold. I chalked this up to learning experience and it was time for the sprue glue to be cast. I know this wasn't gonna be perfect, but I wanted to try it. I performed a small viscosity and handling test first, where I put a little bit of sprue glue on a stick to see how much it droops down during drying out. The result is pretty much a negligible amount. It also starts to stick to absolutely anything as soon it is not submerged in acetone, so it is a bit hard to handle. Looking at my hands, an idea struck me. It was just crazy enough to work. I stretched out a rubber glove over a glass jar and just spooned some goo in. I tied it off at the top and started squeezing. I got the goo as far as I could before cutting the end open. Some people might accuse me of milking this whole sprue goo fat for views, but I think that is utterly ridiculous and you don't want to start that beef with me. I somehow forced the substance into the mold, compacted it as much as I could and then left it alone. I already suspected this isn't gonna be perfect. After a day or so I broke open the mold and uh, I made a moonstone or something of the sort. Now before analyzing what went wrong I contemplated what can I do with this. If only there were a place where you could offload junk that has no inherent value other than you wasting a lot of time on it. So in conclusion I had some things to improve. In no particular order. First is my mold making skills. The mold had a lot of bubbles and while it didn't really matter here it is still detrimental to quality. Second, I needed to find a mold release that works. I essentially made a one part mold, which is not an improvement over the work of miniature hobbies. Next, the sprue goo was exposed to air from multiple sides, not just from the top, and that probably affected how it looked. Interestingly, the top side has seemingly less holes than the enclosed D20. This might mean that my method is inherently flawed and acetone does not evaporate the way I imagine it does. The substance also wasn't properly injected into the mold. I basically just forced it in with a spoon and the glove, but I have no way of knowing if it filled the mold initially. One thing I'm thinking about is forcing it in via a pressure chamber or maybe some other means that presses it from top to bottom, such as centrifugal force. The main observation is that the goo changes its properties rapidly once it is exposed to air. It tends to hold together and stick to absolutely everything. I'd like to look into how to keep it more liquid or just keep it liquid longer. Acetone is just one solvent that can be used with polystyrene. Maybe working with a different one will yield different results. I can also attempt to do the whole process when the mold itself is submerged in acetone. This would need some actual investment into equipment, not just using trash glue together. The one positive takeaway was that the sprue glue did hold the shape of the mold in the end. 
so even if I can't fix the bubble issue, I can cast up with that texture. I can totally see myself casting larger pieces than just covering them with something else for a proper texture. I think this small experiment gave me a lot of points of improvement and I will continue to work on this. Thanks for watching my journey of goblin engineering and please subscribe if you want to see me fumbling around a bit more. See you next time!